Hey everyone, a while ago I made a video on native access and at the time it could have been done a lot better. I was still working out video X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I decided to replace that video with this one and make things a lot more clearer for you to understand and hopefully answer a lot of the questions I still keep getting on that old video. So enjoy. And if I miss anything, don't kill me. When opening native access for the first time, you'll be asked to input your login details. If you don't have an account with Native Instruments, be sure to register one. You can do it through the software. Now, before we start installing any of our libraries, I always highly recommend checking your preferences, which can be located by clicking on this icon at the top right and going to preferences. We want to tell Native Access what the default locations are for installing any of the content that we download and install. And you'll have five tabs for this. So download location is where all of the software gets downloaded to before it's installed. Application location, this is where any apps will be installed, so standalone versions of any software like Contact or Massive, etc. Content location, this is where the samples for your sample libraries will be stored. I recommend highly putting these on a separate hard drive to your operating system. VST64 location, this is where the 64-bit version of your product will be installed. Usually this is on your C drive and your program files. And then the same goes for your VST32-bit location as well. So if you're running a 32-bit version of Windows or of your DAW, you will want to install your plugins into the 32-bit directory. To the left of Native Access, if you click on the Not Installed tab, you'll be able to view all of your Native Instrument products which are currently not installed to your machine. If you've purchased a product directly off nativeinstruments.com, it should automatically show up inside of Native Access, so you don't have to worry about adding a serial and registering the product because it's already been taken care of. You just simply click on Install and it will start downloading the files and installing them to where you set in your preferences. Now, if you're using a library that's been bought from a third party and not sold directly through Native Instruments, then you'll have to download the library from the developer using their method of download. And then you'll have to manually point where this library is inside of Native Access by just clicking on the text that says Add Library and then simply go into browse and navigating to the root folder of the product you wish to point native access to. You might be required to register the product first before you can see it inside of native access. And to do this is really straightforward. Simply click on add a serial at the top left and input the serial number which was provided with your download. Once you've done this, Native Access will add the product to the list so you can then either install it or point it to the directory as I mentioned previously using the add library function. If you decide to move some of your sample content to a new hard drive, you need to make sure you tell Native Access where it's gone to. You'll notice underneath your product there'll be a bright orange text saying repair. If you click on this, you'll get an option to reinstall the product if it's a Native Instruments one, or change the location so Native Access knows exactly where to look um, because you've obviously moved it. Simply click on the browse function and navigate to the roots of the folder and then click on relocate and native access will now know where the new location is and have things working for you. This especially applies to any sample libraries that work inside of contact. Lastly, not all developers will pay the associated licensing fees to have their products listed in the contact browser or actually work inside of native access. Um, so for those kind of libraries, you don't actually need to worry about the software in terms of registering it and uh, installing it. You simply just need to load the patches directly from the location using the file manager in contact and then browsing to the instruments folder of your product and then you can drag and drop it in. Obviously, this can get a little bit tedious. Um, so a quicker way to get around things is by right clicking on contact. So you get the quick load editor and then just taking a bunch of patches and drag and dropping them into a folder you can create. You can literally create a folder by right clicking, name it whatever you want, and then using shift and select to select all of the instrument patches for that library. You can then drag and drop them over into this new folder, like so. 
And then every time you need to work with this particular library, you can just use the quick load to navigate to the patches instantly and drag and drop them in. Now, one thing to consider is that not all sample libraries work inside of the free contact player. Some of them will require you to own the full version of contact in order to work without using native access. The developers will list this at the bottom under specifications. It's very important that you check for this because if you buy a product that only works within the full version of contact, when you try and load it into the contact player, it will probably load up in demo mode and not work correctly for you. So that's just something to bear in mind. So just to summarize, Native Access is a piece of software that allows you to download and install all of your products which you have bought through Native Instruments. If it's a third party developer, they would have had to have paid for a licensing in order to work in the same way as normal native instrument products do from within native access. So for example, orchestral tools just had their sale and obviously they've paid for the integration because you can download and register the product through native access once you've bought it through the native instrument store. A lot of companies don't tend to do this. So what you'll find is that you'll have to buy the product, download the, the content of that library from the developer and sometimes they will pay for a license for it to be integrated into contact so then you would get a serial number pop that into native access and then once you see it inside of native access the product you can then point the product to where the library is stored on your computer and then when you open up contact you'll see it in the right there'll be that little beautiful box of art with your instrument patches in whereas some developers don't pay for any of the licensing um, so how i showed you at the end of the video where you have to manually find the instrument patches and drag and drop them into contact is how you would go about using them but again you need to make sure that you're using the right version of contact for the product. So if the product requires the full paid version of contact to use, you need to make sure you buy it. Otherwise, when you go to download it and use it within the regular free contact player, it will just say demo mode or it just won't work. So that's something to triple check and bear in mind. Hopefully you found this more useful and um, see you later.